You know, I love Yosemite. I was here first time, climbed here when I was 13 years old, 1972. I made my parents stop at El Cap Meadow. I ran up, touched the rock, and I knew right then I was going to climb it. Then I trained myself, and then I came back at 17, tried it, and then did four routes when I was 18. But I want people to be able to have that experience. You know, there is a history that climbers needed to fix up, and that is 40 years ago, 30 years ago, there was trash on the walls in Yosemite, and I think that's largely changed because of efforts like facelift, but it isn't just our trash, it's everyone's trash. When you go to a place, you want to see it as if it was natural. The Yosemite facelift started 20 years ago with Ken, who is the founder of the Yosemite Climbing Association, and his whole Thing was he was a guide and he got tired of seeing trash instead of complaining about someone needs to fix it he was like well I'm just gonna do something about it because that's just how Ken is and my job not only as a climbing guy was to keep him safe teach him climbing but also how to behave in the wilderness it's like hey it's a wilderness area but watch where you step or you're gonna step in toilet paper and I wasn't gonna pick that stuff up and put it in my pack you know with my climbing gear so I was angry for years like why do people do this can't they at least bury it or take care of it Finally, I just go, you know what, it's so bad, I gotta turn it around. So I'm just gonna clean it up and at least I cannot have to watch where I walk. We each went out to our area that really bothered us and cleaned it up. And it was so successful, I turned it into this, what it is now. What I call it is a cleanup festival. So we come out here for five days and we clean up and then also party at night and participate in hearing people's presentations and a live band after on Saturday. I will say that it wasn't all me, it's all these people that are here. All of us did it and we've all developed this. So some of these core volunteers have been to everyone just like myself and they run their own portion of the event. Well, Touchstone started supporting facelift probably in about 2000 or so. There was an unpaid climbing ranger that needed to be able to make a living, so Touchstone was one of the first funders of that. It's important for us at Touchstone to, you know, continue to foster stewardship just because this is our this is our sport. We love it. This is what the gyms are about. There's a culture of our of people climbing in a gym. This is kind of similar to outside of gym, there's kind of a free nature of seeing something beautiful and being in it. You know, oftentimes climbers are kind of this fringe community that a lot of the public looks up to. Kids often are like super stoked to see you come off the wall with all your gear and asking about it. But it's important to remember like we're not the only ones using these spaces. So being above average stewards and taking care of them is really important. <laughs> you have a responsibility not to leave signs of your comings and goings to the greatest extent possible. And I think further you've got responsibility to pass that on any way you can to encourage other people to act the same way. I think the coolest thing so far has been just interacting with all sorts of people here. People from all sorts of backgrounds, new to climbing, old to climbing, not a climber, hiker, backpacker, whatever. Just coming out to a beautiful place to try and support it in a way that they can and learn a little bit about it. I think that's probably the best part because it's pretty rare I think you can get you know this amount of people to accumulate and be that excited about something in an outdoor space. None of this can happen with just us. Like we highly depend on sponsors and volunteers to participate, to spread the word, to make sure that these things are advertised. We partner with Leave No Trace so that people have better ethics when they're out here. We partner with gyms like Touchstone because those are the climbers that are gonna be coming here. It's like, it's important to reach out and make these connections like with the outdoor community, with sponsors who are avid 
outdoorsy people who care about the environment, who care about preserving Yosemite. You, you saw the children out here with their vests and so excited that they're out cleaning up trash. They're our future land stewards. They're smart. They know what's going on, you'll see. Kids give me hope. And what I'd like to see happen someday with facelift, we got a lot of problems you know, on our planet right now, but this is a stepping stone where everybody can agree litter doesn't belong here. Also, I think people kind of get exposed to this and then they learn about other problems and they'll go in and tackle problems that aren't as visible. So trash is visible, it doesn't matter whether you're old, young, from a foreign country, American, Republican, Democrat, doesn't matter. We all agree it's bad, it doesn't belong here, and we all love Yosemite. So right there, we have a talking point and, and the basis to start a friendship.